In an immense universe, a little globe revolves around a star. It is the third star in a row, Mercury, Venus, Earth, of the planetary family. It is of a solid core covered over most of its surface with liquid. It has a gaseous envelope. Living creatures fill the liquid. Other living creatures fly in the gas, and still others creep and walk upon the ground on the bottom of the gaseous ocean. Man, a being of erect stature, thinks himself the prince of creation. He felt like this long before he, by his own efforts, came to know how to fly on wings of metal around the globe. He felt godlike before he could talk to his fellow man on the other side of the globe. Today he can see the microcosm in a drop of water and the elements in the stars. He knows the laws governing the living cell and its chromosomes and the laws governing the macrocosm of the sun, moon, planets, and stars. He assumes that gravitation keeps the planetary system together. Man and beast on their planet, the sea within its borders, for millions and millions of years he maintains. The planets have rolled along on the same paths and their moons around them and man in these eons has arisen from a one cell infusorium all the long way up the ladder to his status of homo sapien. Is man's knowledge now nearly complete? Are only a few more steps necessary to conquer the universe? To extract the energy of the atom? Since these pages were written, this has already been done. To cure cancer, to control genetics, to communicate with other planets, and learn if they have living creatures too. Here begins Homo ignoramus. He does not know what life is, or how it became to be, whether it originated from inorganic matter. He does not know whether other planets of this sun or of other suns have life on them, whether the forms of life there are like those around us, ourselves included. He does not know how this solar system came into being, although he has built up a few hypotheses around it. He knows only that the solar system was constructed billions of years ago. He does not know what this mysterious force of gravitation is that holds him and his fellow man on the other side of the planet with their feet on the ground. Although he regards the phenomenon itself as the law of laws, he does not know what the earth looks like five miles under his feet. He does not know how mountains came into existence or what caused the emergence of the continents, although he builds hypotheses around these. Nor does he know from where oil came. Again, hypotheses. He does not know why only a short time ago a thick glacial sheet pressed upon most of Europe and North America, as he believes it did nor how palms could grow above the polar circle, nor how it came about that the same fauna fill the inner lakes of the old and the new world. He does not know where the salt in the sea came from. Although man knows that he has lived on this planet for millions of years, he finds a recorded history of only a few thousand years, and even these few thousand years are not sufficiently well known. Why did the Bronze Age precede the Iron Age, even though iron is more widely distributed over the world, and its manufacture is simpler than that of the alloy of copper and tin. But what mechanical means were structures of immense blocks built on high mountains of the Andes? Kind of, that is a mystery. Why did brass come before iron if iron is so much easier to make and stronger? What caused the legend of the flood to originate in all countries of the world? Is there any adequate meaning to the term antediluvian? From what experiences grew the eschatological pictures of the end of the world? In this work, of which the present book is the first, some of these questions will be answered, but only at the cost of giving up certain notions now regarded as sacred laws in science. The millions of years of the present constitution of the solar system and the harmonious revolution of the earth, with all their implication as regards to the theory of evolution. The Celestial Harmony The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. The day consists of 24 hours. The year consists of 365 days, 5 hours, and 49 minutes. The moon circles the earth, changing its phases, crescent, full, decrescent. The terrestrial axis points in the direction of the polar star. After winter comes spring, then summer, then fall. These are common facts. Are they invariable laws? 
Must it be forever? Was it always so? The sun has nine planets. Mercury has no satellites. Venus has no satellites. The Earth has the moon. Mars has two small trabants, mere pieces of rock, and one of them completes its month before Mars ends its day. Jupiter has 11 moons. This was back in the 1940s when he wrote this, the pre-space age, and 11 different kinds of months to count. Saturn has, I think, oh yeah, Jupiter has 79 moons. Saturn has 82. That's the last current. Uranus has five moons here. That's what, that was what was known by science at the time. I'll just leave it at that. Neptune 1, Pluto 9. The sun rotates in an easterly direction. All planets revolve in their orbits in the same direction, counterclockwise, if seen from the north, around the sun. Most of their moons revolve counterclockwise in direct motion, but there are a few that revolve in the opposite direction, in retrograde motion. No orbit is an exact circle. There is no regularity to the eccentrical shapes of the planetary orbits. Each elliptical curve verges in a different direction. It is not known for certain, but it is assumed that Mercury permanently shows the same face to the Sun, as our moon does with respect to the Earth. Information obtained by different methods of observation of Venus is contradictory. It is not known whether Venus rotates so slowly that its day equals its year, or so rapidly that the night side is never sufficiently cool. Mars rotates in 24 hours, 37 minutes, 22.6 sec mean period, a period comparable to the terrestrial day. Jupiter, which in volume is 1300 times larger than the Earth, completes a rotation in the short space of 9 hours and 50 minutes. It's spinning. What causes this variability? Is it not a law that planets should rotate? or have days and nights, still less that its day and night must return every 24 hours. If Pluto rotates from east to west, it has the sun rising in the west. Uranus has the sun rising and setting neither in the east nor the west, so it is not a law that a planet of the solar system must rotate from west to east, and that the sun must rise in the east. The equator of the earth is inclined to the plane of its ecliptic at an angle of 23 and a half degrees. This causes the change of seasons during the annual revolution of the sun. The axis of the other planets point in other directions of seemingly deliberate choice. It is not a general law for all planets that winter must follow fall and summer is the spring. The axis of Uranus is placed almost in the plane of its orbit. For about 20 years, one of its polar regions is the hottest place on the planet. Then night gradually descends and 20 years later, the other pole enters the tropics for an equal length of time. The moon has no atmosphere. It is not known whether Mercury has any atmosphere. Venus is covered with dense clouds, but not of water vapor. Mars has a transparent atmosphere, but almost without oxygen or water vapor. Its composition is unknown. Jupiter and Saturn have gaseous envelopes. It is not known whether they have solid cores. It is not a general law that a planet have an atmosphere or water. Mars is 0.15 the volume of the Earth. The next planet, Jupiter, is about 8,750 times as large as Mars. There is no regularity of or relation between the size of the planets and their position in the system. On Mars are seen canals and polar caps. On the moon, craters. The Earth has reflecting oceans. Venus has brilliant clouds. Jupiter has belts and a red spot. Saturn has rings. The celestial harmony is composed of bodies different in size, different in form, different in the velocity of rotation, with differently directed axis of rotation, with different directions of rotation, with differently composed atmospheres, or without atmospheres, with a varying number of moons or without moons, and with satellites revolving in either direction. It appears then to be by chance that the Earth has a moon, that we have day and night, and that their combined length is equal to 24 hours, that we have a sequence of seasons, we have oceans and water, atmosphere and oxygen, and probably also that our planet is placed between Venus at our left and Mars at our right.